Hi, Assalamu alaikum, Surumi Salim with you and you are watching my nursing tutorial. Today's class is continuation for central nervous system. So if you are watching my channel for the first time, please subscribe, like, share to your friends and put your valuable comments and don't forget to press the bell button so that you will be notified when I upload new videos. So if you are watching my channel, again I am telling you I have done already central nervous system part 1 and this is part 2. Okay, so watch that video before watching this one. So we will go to the topic. Today's topic is the parts of central nervous system. So the parts of central nervous system is generally divided into three. The forebrain, midbrain and the hindbrain. So we will have a diagram with a frontal view of the uh, central nervous system and we will go through. See, this is the forebrain. Assume like that, midbrain. The forebrain, midbrain and the hindbrain. Okay. So first of all we will see the forebrain. Before going to that I will brief regarding central nervous system. So the central nervous system is the master system of the body which coordinate all the activities of other system and the other parts of the body. So this is called the master system of the body and it has a contralateral coordination. That means the right side of the body is controlled by the left hemisphere and the left side of the body is controlled by the right hemisphere. And you know the central nervous system will be with the help of peripheral from our system collect all the impulses which is grouped into sensory and motor. So sensory impulses are the impulses that are received from other part of the body towards the brain and it respond to the sensory impulses by the motor neurons okay so the central nervous system receive impulses from the other part of the body and it respond by means of motor neurons okay now we will see each the forebrain consists of the telencephalon and diencephalon so the telencephalon means the cerebral hemispheres are called telencephalon and the diencephalon consists of thalamus and hypothalamus so we will see individually the cerebral hemispheres or it is divided into right hemisphere and the left hemisphere and it is connected by means of corpus callosum okay now the cerebral hemisphere is the wide area in which there is more number of neurons what is neurons they are the structural and functional unit of the central nervous system we already learned in the part one okay and the neurons are called the true cells of central nervous system okay now in the cerebral hemispheres you can see the cerebral cortex so i think you all heard about the gray matter and the white matter the gray matter and white matter means the cell the true cells that is the neurons we tell before consist of a cell body and see axons so the neuron consists of a head portion and a tail portion right the head portion is called the cell body and the tail portion is called the axon if this axons grouped in a portion see grouped in a portion like this the cell bodies of the axon or the neuron the cell bodies of the neuron grouped together in a particular region of the central nervous system is called the nuclei or the nucleus okay and the white portion and this is called the gray matter also okay so the cell bodies of the neurons that is grouped inside the central nervous system is called what is called the gray matter or the nucleus and the cell bodies that are concentrated or grouped in the peripheral nervous system is called the ganglia okay and what is white matter the axon of the neuron is grouped and it is called white matter okay now again in the forebrain it consists of the cerebrum and the diencephalon okay the cerebrum i tell you before the cerebral cortex which consists of a group of cell bodies that is called gray matter okay now the cerebral cortex is divided into major four lobes that is called frontal lobe parietal lobe temporal lobe occipital lobe and also it has a system called or a circuit called limbic system okay so the forebrain consists of the cerebral hemispheres 
for the telencephalon and it consists of diencephalon. The another name of forebrain is called proencephalon. Okay, proencephalon. Now, the cerebral hemisphere consists of, I tell you before, four lobes. Now, we will see individual lobes. Okay, the first lobe is the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe is the largest lobe in the cerebral cortex and it helps in the pay a person's or it receives an in and respond to a person's judgment, moral values and a person's abstract thinking, concentration and there is a particular area in the frontal lobe called Broca's area. What is that? Broca's area. What this area do? This area helps in the production of speech okay or the expressive language or the production of speech with the help of tongue lips okay so that is called the broca's area this is important one most commonly asked in uh, more various exams for various nursing exams okay so this is the broca's area so what are the major functions for the frontal lobe include the broca's area for the speech then the um, impulses are received from a person's abstract thinking or a person's concentration, judgmental power, all these are controlled by the frontal area. Okay. Now we will see the parietal lobe. The frontal lobe comes like this, then the behind it's the parietal lobe. The frontal lobe and the parietal lobe are separated by means of central sulcus. Okay. Now we will see parietal lobe. So, what is the important function of parietal lobe? The parietal lobe is otherwise called somatosensory area of the brain in which as the word itself says, it helps in the spatial perception. That means a person or an individual's relation with the external environment. Okay, And it also receives impulses of touch, pressure, pain, temperature, taste. Okay. So, these are the important function for the parietal lobe. Okay. Now, we will move to the temporal lobe. See, the temporal lobe helps in the receiving of, it, or it helps in the receival of impulses from the uh, ear and it helps in the listening. Okay. Auditory impulses are received from the, uh, it's received in the temporal lobe and then there is an area called vernix area present in the temporal lobe. What does vernix area do? The vernix area helps in the interpretation of the sound or interpretation of the speech. Okay, And it also helps in the distinguishing of the uh, sound that we hear. For example, a dog is barking. Okay, The sound is interpreted by help with the help of the temporal area. Okay, now we will go to the occiput that is the behind portion. Okay, the occiput actually we have to give thanks to the occiput because it helps in the um, viewing of the image or the visual area of the brain which helps in the uh, image shape of an object or it receives the impulses from the retina. Okay, and interpret and helps in the visual sensation. So, these are the important lobes of the cerebral cortex, which are the frontal, parietal, temporal and occiput. And which are the important areas that we point out in the frontal region, we point Broca's area and in the occiput for visual and temporal for auditory and there is a vernix area and the parietal for somatosensory perception. Okay, now we will go to the limbic system. So, what is this limbic system? Limbic system means it is a circuit that helps the individual for the survival. So, what we need for the survival? Obviously, food, air, water. Okay, so all those things and the behavior of the person is controlled by the limbic system. Okay, so we finish with the cerebral, cerebral cortex and then the limbic system. Now, we will see what is diencephalon. See, the diencephalon constitute with the thalamus and the hypothalamus is the gate or it act as the gatekeeper of the brain. Why? Because it helps in the uh, uh, distinction of which sensory impulse will go to the brain. Okay. So, it helps it regulate which impulses should go into the brain. So, it is called the gatekeeper of the 
gate keeper of the brain okay so what it do it is the relay station or it is the gate keeper of the brain because it will be distinguishing which sensory impulses should go into the brain okay then behind the thalamus there is a important and a major portion of the brain called the hypothalamus so the what does the hypothalamus do hypothalamus maintain the homeostasis of the body with the help of endocrine system okay and hypothalamus is called the king of endocrine glands and the hyper major important functions of hypothalamus include the respond of the body to a particular situation a stressful situation respond of the body to a fearful situation and maintaining the body temperature of the body then that means thermoregulation okay then it helps in the um, water balance of the body so these are the important function of the hypothalamus okay now we we, we finish with the forebrain we talk about the cerebral hemispheres and it is united by means of corpus callosum we include cerebral cortex gray matter white matter then we talk about the major lobes of the cerebral cortex frontal parietal temporal occiput and then we talk about limbic system then we talk about the diencephalon also next we will go to the midbrain okay the midbrain is otherwise called mesencephalon it consists of the tectum and the tegmentum and the major function of the midbrain is motor coordination okay now we will go to the hind brain so for the hind brain the first portion this is the pons what is that pons the bulging area that you can see is the pons so what this pons do pons helps in the respiration that means it is the respiratory area of the brain okay pneumotoxic respiratory center okay it helps in the regulation of depth rate of respiration okay below the pons you can see another portion called this one medulla oblongata okay so it is between the pons and the spinal cord what is the responsibility it, it, this medulla oblongata is the uh, it is the first portion of the brain which receives the sensory impulses from the spinal cord okay and it helps in the maintenance of heart rate respiration depth and rate of respiration then uh, mm, for the reflexes like vomiting sneezing coughing all are the responsibility or the functions of medulla oblongata okay now you can see this portion that is called cerebellum cerebellum okay cerebellum is the second largest portion of the brain and it is the subconscious area of the brain which helps in maintaining posture and equilibrium of a person so you can see the babies they don't have uh, a good posture or equilibrium at the first age of their life after a couple of years only it will be developed because cerebrum cerebellum is not fully formed in that period so it majorly cerebellum coordinate the posture and equilibrium of a person okay so we finish with the hind brain so we talk about fore brain mid brain and the hind brain okay now we will see the last portion that is the spinal cord okay what is the major function of the spinal cord spinal cord receive sensory impulses and send motor impulses from the brain and it consists of 31 segments which are they the 31 segments include the cervical the cervical the thoracic cervical c8 thoracic 12 segments and what is that uh lumbar and the cosix sacrum and the cosix lumbar 5 sacrum 5 and the cosix so these are the segments important segments of so many cranial nerves are there there is 12 pairs of cranial nerves pairs if ask in pairs tell 12 and if it ask in numbers tell 24 cranial nerves so these are the important parts we learn about central nervous system each portion has importance and most of the uh, exams they are asking about another name for uh, forebrain that is the proencephalon midbrain 
mesencephalon hindbrain rhombencephalon and what is telencephalon cerebral hemisphere is called telencephalon what is diencephalon it consists of the thalamus hypothalamus then we learn about limbic system also now we will see to some of the questions regarding what topic we learned okay so let's see to some of the questions of part 1 and part 2 first question the basic unit of central nervous system so the basic unit of central nervous system is options nephron neuron alveoli neurotransmitter very easy question which is the basic unit it is neuron next question approximate weight of brain approximate weight of brain is 1300 1400 150 gram 250 to 500 710 to 980 which is answer 1300 to 1400 gram next question CSF is produced by we have taught early before that CSF is produced by which ventricle fourth ventricle and specially by choroid plexus next one total number of spinal nerves so here it is asked total number not the pairs so the total number is 62 if it is asked in pairs it is 31 pairs okay so the answer is 62 next question which are the cells or which are the following type of cells that is most commonly seen in the central nervous system so all those uh, cells are called uh, glial cells other uh, that is the neuroglial cells but in among this which is the most commonly seen see obviously the answer will be astrocytes because astrocytes are the having the ability for then a uh, uh, conduction of electrical impulses in the central nervous system okay so the answer is astrocytes myelin sheath of axon is secreted by which cells the answer is schwann cells in order to provide nutrient to the spinal cord the nutrient to the spinal cord as well as brain is provided by means of cerebrospinal fluid option a is gray matter white matter csf and h taped gray matter so the obviously the answer is csf that runs through the cord next we will deal with the question answers for the today's class the largest lobe of cerebral hemisphere or the cerebral cortex which is the largest lobe frontal which part of the brain control the posture and equilibrium the posture and equilibrium is maintained by means of cerebellum broca's area we told earlier broca's area is producing the speech and that is located in the frontal lobe nerve cells or nerve cell bodies occurring in clusters the cell bodies of the neurons are in the group of cluster seen or the term that is used if they are seen as a group it is called when it is occurring in the cns is called a nuclei and when it is occurring in the or it is seen in the peripheral nervous system is called a ganglia center of concentration abstract thinking memory etc are located in which lobe which lobe frontal lobe auditory receptive areas are located in which lobe temporal lobe the cerebellum is separated from the cerebral hemispheres okay the cerebellum is separated from the cerebral hemispheres by means of tendorum or tendorium cerebellum okay so these are the important questions that is most commonly asked in uh, government exams mcqs okay so hope all of you understand so that's all regarding to today's topic today we learn about central nervous system part 2 so if you still didn't subscribe my channel please subscribe like comment and share it to your friends and have a good day assalamu alaikum